Hey, what's going on guys? Tomeister here and welcome back to Rockport. In this episode, I'm going to start to sprawl out a bit from downtown and I'll be building a neighborhood between downtown and our main arterial highway running through the city. And for this neighborhood, it's not going to be too extravagant. However, uh, what will set it apart from all the other neighborhoods around town is it's going to be very historic because it's so close to downtown. Um, so a lot of the houses and, and buildings in this neighborhood are going to be very old, but it's going to be a very rich neighborhood as well. With it being close to downtown and with it being like super historical, um, I also wanted to include a lot of, of like really nice houses. And, and my idea for this neighborhood too was to make it like a sort of government official neighborhood like a lot of the the city's officials would live in this neighborhood like the mayor and and all the city council maybe uh would be in this area just because of its location and and because of its significance so that's the uh, the sort of idea i was going behind with this um in this little central square whatever you want to call it i decided to plop uh this building which uh i guess could represent maybe the mayor's house you know, it's it's right smack dab in the middle of the city, right downtown, so it's a, it's a really cool location. And most of what you're going to see in this episode is all low density buildings. Um, so I'm finally shying away from all the high density big skyscrapers that I've gotten used to plopping over the past few episodes in the, the downtown area. And I'm finally going to start transitioning from the city center into the suburbs that are a bit farther out. Um, so this neighborhood's going to be somewhat of a transitional area you know between between the the two high and low density kind of neighborhoods um so th this neighborhood is going to be low density buildings but they're going to be packed in a high density fashion right i'm going to cram a lot of low density buildings uh next to each other because this is a very historic neighborhood and, and that's typically what you find in these types of places like lots of homes with small yards um but still single family homes and like small apartments and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited to finally start to transition into the the sprawl around the city center because this is really where, you know, the, the city is going to grow super fast and and it's it's really going to start to look like a city. You know, we got downtown and then now comes all the, the surrounding neighborhoods. So it's a, it's a really exciting time. I can't believe how fast the city's been growing. It's it's crazy. You know, I thought it was just going to take forever and ever and ever to even just like finish the peninsula. But after this episode, you know, I'm zooming out and it's it's finally starting to to become real and it's super cool. So here what I'm doing as I'm laying down these roads, I'm trying to make it seem as though this at one point would have been a continuous neighborhood and that a highway would have just been plowed through here <laughs> at one point in time. Um, you know, this is often the case in pretty much any given city uh, where, you know, eventually there's a need for better road connections between the outskirts of town and downtown. So highways were just kind of plowed through neighborhoods. And, you know, I wanted, I wanted Rockport to not be an exception to that. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just trying to be conscious of how I lay down my streets and, and to make it Make it somewhat realistic, you know? And I'm trying to shy away from a grid pattern as much as possible. Uh, Auckland is a very unique city where there seems to be like different grid patterns in pretty much any different neighborhood that you go into. You know, it's it's it seems very random, but there's also like a neat grid system for each neighborhood. But then you hop into the next neighborhood and then it's just on a completely different pattern it's I don't know how to explain it but it's it the city layout of Auckland is honestly quite unique so I'm trying to incorporate a little bit of that in this city as well So when you're playing with only vanilla assets, you are kind of limited on the amount of houses that you have at your disposal. Um, although it, it's pretty good now with all the DLCs that, you know, have and all the buildings that have been added to the game, 
it's not bad now. Uh, but still, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of in that mode where when I was playing some of my modded series, I had literally access to unlimited buildings, right? I could just go on the workshop and download a complete set in whatever style I wanted and, and away you go. Uh, but in the vanilla game, you are a little bit limited. So um, it was a bit of a challenge in this neighborhood to choose what houses I wanted to plop and I didn't want it to look too... Uh, I, I didn't want like too many identical buildings. So I, I decided to include a good mixture of of different houses from different DLCs. So you can see here that I'm using some of the university uh, style residential buildings, a lot of the vanilla buildings and some of the European suburbia buildings. So I'm trying to, to like mix them in, in a way where it doesn't, it's not like too apparent that the theme is, is totally different, right? So I, I just wanna like create a, a blend of all these different styles of buildings. Uh, but exactly what I was saying earlier in this episode, this is a very high-end, like, rich neighborhood. So I am including these large villas in this uh, in this neighborhood too, which is mostly going to be unique to here and maybe a couple of other neighborhoods that are, are kind of like straddling in the mountains. But yeah, this is going to be a really diverse neighborhood. And because it's it's a historic neighborhood, I want to include a lot of mature trees. So you can see here that I included a lot of tree-lined roads. Um, at the end of this episode, I will be going over this area again and pretty much plopping these huge trees wherever I can Just because I want it to you know have that that historic feel right these old 200 year old plus mature trees everywhere. I, I just love these kind of cozy neighborhoods that are just kind of nestled into the trees and I'm really excited to, to, to start to get into some neighborhoods in the future that are nestled into the mountains because the first neighborhood that I built in this series was honestly really fun to build. Kind of challenging too, because, you know, of course you're dealing with a, a challenging terrain. But yeah, I, as the city expands, I, I'm really excited to carve out some neighborhoods into the mountains and create like some Hollywood Hills-ish uh, places. So that'll be really cool. With this neighborhood being highly sought after and, and you know, it's a, it's a quite wealthy neighborhood, of course I'm going to have to provide all of the necessary services close by, so schools and hospitals and whatnot. Um, I'm going to also include a lot of parks in this neighborhood, just because I don't want people starting to complain about low land value and, and you know, just it's going to cause a bunch of problems if I don't do this. <laughs> so I just want to include more services than necessary. Just to keep everyone happy in this place. And although I am playing with a fair amount of mods, none of those mods are really simulation breaking. So I still have to be conscious of all my services, right? I have to provide enough schools and hospitals and whatnot. Um, but I also have to take into consideration land value, pollution, you know, pretty much all of the game's mechanics, right? Uh, so my main concern about this neighborhood is land value just because I am placing a lot of these big mansions and stuff. And it takes, if, if you're playing the game as it's meant to be played, just in like its complete default state, it takes a lot to get these big mansions to spawn up, right? You need to be all the way maxed out to level five. And in order to get to level five buildings, you need all of 
the above, right? <laughs> so like uh, good services, good public transportation as well. So I'm going to I'm going to also make an effort in uh, probably the next episode once I get into public transportation to have a good system running through this neighborhood too. So, you know, there's there's still a lot to think about, even though I'm just plopping away here, building all sorts of random buildings, seemingly. <laughs> uh, I do have to think about how the city is going to function. It's kind of like a, a planned economy, what I'm building here, right? I'm like planning a functional city rather than just letting it grow organically. So really what I'm doing is playing like Soviet simulator in city skylines. That's, that's what I'm doing. It's crazy, isn't it? As I'm building this neighborhood right here by the highway, I soon realize that traffic noise is an issue. Understandably, right? I mean, you got a big highway running through your backyard. Of course, it's gonna be noisy. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of these people are complaining of road noise and they're just constantly falling ill. There's not a whole lot that I can do about that, honestly, because I, I really wish there was um, sound barriers for elevated highways. But unfortunately, in the default game, there's no such thing. Um, so, yeah, I guess these people are just going to have to deal with the noise. <laughs> and I'm, I'm probably just going to have to build a nearby clinic or something because these people are just going to constantly be in and out of hospital with all sorts of road noise related illnesses. Uh, so I'll just have to make healthcare like super accessible for these guys. Um, and yeah, as I was building this neighborhood, I suddenly found myself with a lack of water, uh, which is not ideal. Um, but I'm just going to pause the game and I'm going to deal with that a little bit later in the episode. Uh, it's it's kind of a temporary solution, but you'll see what I build a bit later. It's It, it does just fine. But yeah, I, at one point in the series, I'm going to have to build a second water pumping station or, or something like that to uh, to get some more water into the city. And electricity as well is kind of an issue as well. Um, I So in one of the first episodes, I believe it was in the second one when I built the uh, industrial port area, uh, I placed a coal power plant, I believe, that kind of looked like it could fit into an area like that. Uh, but unfortunately, it's starting to struggle at this point in the city as we near, well, as we surpass 20,000 people. Um, so I'm gonna have to uh, to build another power plant somewhere in the city. I'm, I might actually do that maybe in the next episode. Because for now, I just placed a nuclear power plant on the outskirts of the map and just ran some power lines. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to actually build a power generation station somewhere on the outskirts of town. So I might do that. Uh, but yeah, guys, so so there's, there's a lot of issues that are kind of sprawling up now in the city. That I have to address sooner rather than later. Um, so I, all my basic services such as like schools and hospitals, fire and uh, police protection are okay. I made sure to, uh, to provide lots of that. But what's struggling right now is power and water, but also traffic, right? So uh, traffic is becoming a huge issue in the city. If I look at my traffic menu, the whole downtown is just red. <laughs> Uh, I have zero public transportation, and I know I've kind of mentioned this uh, a few episodes ago, but I think I think it's it's kind of 
the city is in dire need of at least a bus network or i mean i could get the metro running too all the stations are placed down so there's no reason why i couldn't do that i might actually do that next episode guys start to get a public transportation going and uh, improve the efficiency of the city. But anyways, hopping on over onto the other side of this main avenue, um, I'm gonna start to build a new neighborhood. And this neighborhood's gonna be kind of similar to the one I was just working on, uh, but it's not gonna be as sought after, I guess. Um, not gonna be as rich. Most of the houses that you're gonna see in this place are uh, European suburbia. So just, you know, regular houses, nothing out of the ordinary however i can see this area still being quite expensive due to its location you know we are still pretty much downtown um so it's it's gonna be a pretty cool spot i started it off with this uh retaining highway barrier here um and it's kind of a unique feature of this area but i really like it you know it, hopefully this helps with road noise i, I, I don't think it will <laughs> but uh, hopefully not too many people are going to complain about highway noise uh, that are right beside the highway. Oh yeah, and another thing I tried to do in that other neighborhood is to place trees between the houses and uh, and, and the highway. But it's I, I just don't think there is enough space to really cancel out the noise. There, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> I've accepted that. But yeah, this neighborhood is, is kind of cool too. Um, it's close to the stadium and uh, the nature park and uh, Just like the first neighborhood that I was working on it's gonna be kind of nestled into the trees still gonna be a very historic neighborhood So yeah, I, I love it. I think it's really cool All right guys, I don't have much to say for the next couple of minutes So I'm just gonna let you enjoy me plopping away at some houses with some nice background music
All right, so here is the temporary water shortage solution I've come up with. Um, it's nothing complicated. I'm just gonna plop a large water tower over here in the very corner of downtown between the railroad tracks and the street. Um, you know, it's kind of an odd shaped lot and it's not ideal for any residential areas or anything like that. So I thought this would be the perfect place for it. And plus it's right by a high school and the high school is really gonna fill in the rest of this, this weird shaped lot. Um, because this area needed a high school. I only had one other high school in downtown, so I knew that capacity was probably going to become an issue. Uh, so I think this is a perfect spot for a high school. Um, and another thing that was kind of bothering me about this, uh, this area was I thought there was a bit, the, the abrupt change from high density skyscrapers and whatever in downtown to this low density neighborhood i thought that the transition between the two was a little too abrupt so i decided to place down a few like medium density towers uh just at the border between these two neighborhoods just to kind of like create a, a smoother transition between the two and uh, i thought it, it did its job pretty good you know um this is probably a pretty sought after neighborhood as well with the stadium being right here so uh yeah it's it's the, the smoother transition was needed, in my opinion. But anyways, guys, uh, as far as building goes, that's pretty much going to be it for this episode. Stay tuned to the very end as I'm going to showcase everything that I've built today. Um, and the rest of this episode pretty much is going to be just detailing what I've built today and, uh, you know, just laying down a bunch of trees to get that nice historic look that I'm looking for. Um, but stay tuned, guys, to the very end. Uh, if you want to see what the finished product is. And after that, it'll be it for this episode. And uh, as I was saying a, little, a bit earlier, I think what I really should be doing is getting into public transportation. I, I, think, I think I should get into that <laughs> before the city grinds to a halt. So that's probably what's going to happen in next week's episode. Um... But all in all, guys, I, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, leave a like, drop a comment down below. Oh, yeah, before I forget, guys, this neighborhood's going to need a name. Yeah, so uh, drop a comment down below what you think I should name this neighborhood and maybe the next one as well. So these are like two separate neighborhoods that I've built today. Um, so drop a comment down below, maybe with a bit of a lore story. I always like those. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, that's going to be it for this episode. Again, I really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you leave a like, drop a comment. Be sure to subscribe to get notified of future uploads. And I will catch you in the next episode. Take care, guys.